2019 was a big year for the gaming mass market, and we saw a couple of pretty noticeable trends. Now, depending on what type of games you play, your mouse choice can have anywhere from pretty minor all the way to extremely significant impact on your performance. For example, if you play a lot of first person shooters, then your choice of mouse will directly influence your aim, which is obviously a big deal. What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today I want to go over five different options from Corsair and hopefully I can give you some insight that would help you choose the one that would work best for you. Now I say this about every piece of gear, whether it's a mouse or a keyboard, a monitor or a camera, it doesn't matter. When you're choosing something for yourself, go beyond simply looking at top five lists. We each have different size hands, we grip the mouse differently and we have different preferences. So get some ideas and then incorporate your personal experience when you're actually choosing. I'm gonna cover the Dark Core RGB SE or Special Edition, the Iron Claw RGB Wireless, the Night Sword RGB, the M55 RGB Pro, and the Glaive RGB Pro. Now I think these give you a pretty good feel for the range of options from Corsair. Now if there are any other mice that you want me to cover in a future video, just let me know in the comments section below and I'll do my best. If this is your first time here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then drop me a comment so that I can hit you up with a reply. And by the way, yeah, I really will. All right, so let's get started with the Dark Core RGB SE, which is the special edition version of the Dark Core RGB. That means that it has all the same features with the added bonus of Qi wireless charging. And I love that because in this case, wireless actually means wireless. So I can use the mouse and charge it without having to worry about a micro USB cable on my desk. But all this wireless talk doesn't really matter if it's not coupled with performance. Like sure, if you're just doing work or you're casually playing, it might not make a big difference, but if you're a competitive gamer, you need better performance and you're not going to want to deal with any type of input lag. The Dark Core SE uses an ultra fast one millisecond 2.4 gigahertz connection for the best performance. You also have the option for low latency Bluetooth connectivity, and of course you can use it in wired mode. This mouse uses a 16,000 optical DPI sensor. It has nine programmable buttons and it weighs 128 grams. Most of the mouse is covered with a matte plastic, but the thumb rest and the back of the mouse are covered with this textured, soft, bumpy surface. And it reminds me of what you get on the Corsair keyboard wrist rests but it's definitely a different pattern. I like this material because it prevents my hand from sliding off the back of the mouse. And it also helps channel some air under my hand to keep my hand cooler during long sessions. In terms of ergonomics, I really like the longer shape of this mouse. Again, from my grip, I feel like it supports my palm really well has pretty nice arch to it. Overall, I like the understated use of RGB here. We have the logo and the texture portion of the mouse and also some accents around the wheel, the sniper button, and then two more stripes in the back. The IQ software allows you to switch between different RGB modes, you know the deal. You control and assign different functions to the button and you can store up to three profiles using the onboard memory. Now going back to the SE version with wireless charging, I wanted to show you this mouse with the MM1000 Qi wireless charging mouse pad, which would let you charge the dark core by placing it on the charging zone. But let's just say there was an incident and now I charge it using my tilt charging pad. All right, next we're gonna look at another wireless option, the Iron Claw RGB Wireless. Aesthetically, this mouse is a little more aggressive with sharper and more pronounced side buttons. The mouse is designed for palm grips or for larger hands, and the sculpted contoured shape makes it quite comfortable during long sessions. So if you're someone with bigger hands and you feel like smaller options just aren't right for you, this is definitely something that you should check out. The majority of the mouse is matte, 
with a softer plastic that we saw in the dark core and I actually like the additional grippiness of this surface. It really feels nice to hold. The left and the right sides of the iron claw have a harder and textured area which add to the stability and overall even for someone without larger hands like me this mouse was very comfortable. It's not the lightest mouse in the world it weighs 130 grams and if you want three less buttons and to give up the wireless functionality, you can just go for the wired option, which weighs in at 105 grams. The optical sensor is a custom Pixart PMW3391 native 18,000 DPI, and it's adjustable in one DPI resolution steps, so you can customize it to work best for how you play. You can also program three DPI defaults, so you can easily switch between them without having to go into the software. Another cool feature is that you can run a surface calibration tuning utility to automatically tailor responsiveness and precision based on your unique playing surface. There are 10 fully programmable buttons that let you use powerful macros, key remaps, and all this can be programmed using the IQ software. Of course, the software also lets you control the three RGB lighting zones, the mouse has onboard memory allowing you to store three different profiles. The wheel is wider than what we saw in the dark core, which gives it an overall more substantial feel, but it's actually a little looser to turn. From a connectivity standpoint, you have three options. You can use Corsair's slipstream technology, which Corsair says delivers sub one millisecond responsiveness, and frequency shift to prevent any type of connection interference. You can also connect using low latency Bluetooth with up to 50 hours of battery life. And then of course, like I said before, you can use it with the provided braided USB cable for wired mode, which lets you keep playing while you're charging. And these three options are controlled using this toggle on the bottom. Overall, if you're looking for a very comfortable mouse for palm grips and for users with larger hands, if you're looking for a super fast wireless connectivity at a mid-range price, check out the Iron Claw RGB Wireless. All right, moving on, let's take a look at the Night Sword RGB. This is a wired mouse. Again, we have an 18,000 DPI sensor, 10 programmable buttons, but in terms of form factor, we have somewhat of a combo between the Dark Core and the Iron Claw. We got a little more RGB that we saw in the first two mice, and I like that Corsair used this perforated grid to add some depth and texture to the light. Corsair also added a precise weight calibration system which consists of two sets of weight and six mounting locations. So we have three 2.8 gram weights and three 4.5 gram weights. If you do the math, that comes out to 120 different weight and balance configurations, and they start at 119 grams. So you'll be able to use Corsair's patent pending software to detect the mouse's center of gravity in real time and then fine tune the balance to perfectly fit your grip. Night Sword is a little less arched than the Iron Claw. It's a little larger and longer than the Dark Core and with a different but similarly streamlined custom button design. Mouse buttons one and two use a matte finish just like the Dark Core, and then it transitions to a nicely textured and softer back. The wheel is similar in size to the Iron Claw, but with a debossed rather than embossed textured grip. I like the additional clickiness of the rotation in terms of control, and I felt that pressing the wheel down required a level of pressure that was more comfortable for me without resulting in any unintentional clicks. The thumb rest offers the same texture we saw on the back of the mouse, and the combination of the two resulted in a very stable grip. Each of the 10 programmable buttons can be assigned a function using IQ to perform a macro or any other key press functions that you select. With default settings, one of the buttons is a sniper button, which will instantly lower your DPI and zoom in to make it easier for you to acquire and hit your target. Overall, this is a very good mouse for the price. It offers comfort, performance, and it's definitely customizable. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. It helps me know what kind of content you guys like so that I can make more of it.
Moving on, we have another wired mouse, the M55 RGB Pro. And this one is a little different. With the M55, Corsair decided to implement a flared out ambidextrous design so that everyone gets to experience the same level of comfort. We have two identical side buttons on each side, the wheel and a customized DPI switch button at the top. The M55 is super light, weighing in at only 86 grams and it has eight programmable buttons and two RGB zones. I really like the look of this mouse. The shimmering white surface looks really nice with the gray buttons and the textured side panel. As far as background lighting, as I mentioned, is fairly limited use of RGB with the logo on the back and the mode indicator at the top. The wheel has a honeycomb texture to it, which provides plenty of traction. And I like the amount of tension this wheel requires to press. Overall, the mouse was fairly comfortable to use after a slight adjustment period to the flaring out in the back. Obviously, it's a completely different feel than the first three mice that we discussed, and it's almost weightless by comparison. This makes it a great travel mouse. You can just chuck it in your bag and take it with you. The white surface has a nice feel to it and the side panels add to the stability and control. The M55 uses a 12,400 DPI optical sensor and we also have onboard memory so the DPI and lighting settings will be retained across devices regardless of whether or not you're running the IQ software. Overall this is a good option for the price. You're getting an ambidextrous design, good performance, and a very clean look. The last mouse I want to look at is the Glaive RGB Pro, which has a nicely contoured arch, which was extremely comfortable to use. I wasn't sure how these two side buttons would play out because of the cutout design, but the position is excellent, so they were right where I expected them to be. There are a total of three interchangeable magnetic grips, and I was really surprised at just how much of a difference going from the smallest even to the medium size one made. I kept going back and forth between the medium one and the largest option and at the end it was a coin flip about which one I preferred. We're back to using an 18,000 DPI Pixar PMW3391 optical sensor for consistently high accuracy and the DPI settings can be adjusted using the IQ software in increments of one. So again, you can pick exactly the setting that works best for you and how you play. There are a total of seven fully programmable buttons, which again, using the IQ software, you can set to perform macros. You can also select your favorite RGB lighting pattern with the three zone system. Aesthetically, I really like the aluminum and plastic construction and the fact that there are no glossy surfaces. I know it's a personal preference, but that's what I like right now. So you should ask me again next week. The wheel features an aluminum construction, and I like how wide and textured it is. It's probably my favorite wheel of the five in terms of feel and rotation. As with the other options, we can save everything from DPI, macros, and lighting settings to the onboard profiles, so we can continue to use the Glaive on other devices while maintaining our preferences. I like this because I can easily move from my main desktop to my laptop and finally to my editing station without having to have IQ installed on all three. The Glaive RGB weighs 115 grams, which puts it somewhere near the middle of the pack. And it's actually surprisingly light for a mouse that felt longer and more substantial. There are five DPI settings and the top of the Glaive features DPI up and down buttons with five LED indicators showing you which options you've selected. You can also use surface calibration and IQ to further customize the sensor for the particular surface that we're using and to improve performance. Overall, this is a good all around mouse. It works great for different hand sizes and different grips. I like the modular approach to the thumb grip, the onboard profiles, additional DPI settings, and the ability to calibrate it for my unique surface.
All right, so which one of these did you like best? Like if I was gonna do a giveaway, hint, hint, which one of these would you want? Let me know. I think that there are some excellent options here in terms of variety, prices, sizes, and feature set. Again, if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe and notification button, and then drop me a comment to say hello. I'll definitely hit you back as soon as I see it. I'll put links in the description to all the mice that I discussed. There are always discounts and specials, and those links will automatically be updated with the lowest pricing. I really hope I was able to give you a good overview of some of your mouse options from Corsair. If I did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. Like I said, it helps me know what kind of content you guys like so I can make more of it. You can always find me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.